a war machine! I am a war machine! As promised, the review of How to Paint Citadel Miniatures Volume 2. Uh, big jump in improvement over the previous incarnation of the book. Uh, but it's, uh, it's not exactly groundbreaking, if, if you know what I mean. Alright, jump in real quick. Got a vast table of contents that is not alphabetically ordered like it was in the previous book. Uh, an introduction by Rick Priestley. Uh, I believe he's the author of this particular book. Um, about a hundred pages a book. And, uh, about a quarter of that is stage by stage painting, which is okay, but uh, if you're me, uh, I like watching uh, videos on how to paint because it actually demonstrates the technique instead of telling you what to do and kind of leaving you to your own devices. But anyway, uh, materials list of the book is actually fairly useful. Um, obviously, you need paint brushes. Um, they go so far as to recommend a uh, a daylight bulb. They just say a desk lamp, but this is right here is a daylight bulb. I recommend you get a CFL bulb, which is a uh, compact fluorescent light bulb. Saves energy uh, and is actually not too expensive. I paid a fortune for the ones in my lights, but uh, I just bought a pack of four of these for eight bucks at the Home Depot or if you're somewhere else, a local home improvement store. You got your clippers, you got your glue, you got your pin vise for pinning your metal models together. Um, Everything you see in this book will, of course, well, aside from the lamp here, will be Games Workshop products because this is their book. Um, craft knife files, they, uh, they call it a hobby knife most of the time, so I don't know why they say craft knife. Uh, basing material, strongly recommend you get this from a different supplier because this is about eight or nine bucks for this little tub, and it's about the same for a uh, Woodland Scenics, uh, much larger canister. Uh, green stuff, razor saw, this is for cutting tabs off of bases or doing head swaps, things like that. Primer, they have their uh, paint station, which is actually what I reco record my videos on. Uh, I, I took away this section here, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. A lot of this book is also dedicated to showcasing heavy metal stuff um, and golden demon stuff, so it's more inspirational than anything really. I think it's kind of a transition between chapters to show you the models, which is kind of nice. Uh, gives you a break from reading instruction, but you know, if you read White Dwarf or look at any codexes, you've seen it all before. Appropriation Assembly. This is actually a very useful section uh, that they have in here. Uh, they start out with something metal models where they go with mold lines, which is this is a Dark Angel Commander. Show you a mold line running down the side of it. Uh, they don't. T they tell you how to get rid of it, but uh, there's no no instruction, so to speak. It just says file it away. Uh, I use a hobby knife for all of my mold lines, which I'll demonstrate in a later video. Um, they go through filing a model, uh, kinking the base. So if anybody ever has that problem where you have to kink the base to fit it inside of one of these, they go over that just in case you need to know. Over here you got flashing, which is another problem with metal models. It's a really thin layer of metal that you get in some parts of it. You can just scrape that out with a knife. Uh, and then they uh, demonstrate their vent problem, which is not it, it's a common occurrence in metal models where this really thin piece of uh, metal it shoots through the vent where the air is supposed to escape in the molding process. It's, it's no big uh, thing, but at least it addresses it. Uh, and down here is a little description of uh, blue tech or poster putty, which is used to, you know, position your models prior to. Uh, and for plastic models, they recommend you scrub the um, sprue so that you can remove the mold release uh, residue off of it. I never do that and I haven't had a problem, but you know, you can if you want. And then so on and so forth, clip it out, glue it, and you, you guys know the drill. Uh, small bit on converting. Chop this guy's arm off here, make him look really goofy over here, because he's got this crazy triangle armpit now. A small section on uh, gap filling. They use 
Galrock, the Chaos Dragon here. Uh, not just for regular old gap filling, though they also have a small bit on uh, modeling in essentially large gaps uh, using a sculpting tool or fingernails or whatever you happen to have. This is one of the tools I do recommend buying from GW, which is a sculpting tool for green stuff. Just very useful. If you can find a pack of dentist tools, though, use those, though. Um, general advice on undercoating. Uh, here's a diagram here. They got a box around it, some paper spray about 12 inches away. If you've ever primed a model, you know how to prime a model. Uh, differences between white and dark undercoats. You know, bright models, darker models, so on and so forth. Uh, transition into another chapter. Techniques. Layering, black base coating, uh, face painting, blending. I mean, these are these are like this is the low point of the book. They don't detail hardly anything in here. It's this square here, this square here, this square here. It's all really nothing. Color wheel, which is very useful when looking for complementary colors, but you can go online and print one of these out for almost nothing. Uh, what happens when you mix black with yellow or yellow with white? Uh, your primary and secondary colors, mixing them with black and white. It's a diagram of what you'll get out of it. Don't know why, but there it is. Uh, dry brushing, an oft overlooked technique, but again here they don't really uh, showcase it very well. Uh, more dry brushing, getting chalky dry brushes, adding mud to boots. It's really just blurb here, blurb here, blurb here. And some of this, like this here, this is actually repeated from the uh, previous book, actually, from uh, How to Paint Miniatures, Volume 1. This was just yellow ink. Now they call it Griffon Sepia, which is one of their washes. So, I, I just noticed it because I've read the other book. Uh, guide coats, highlights. I mean, they, they don't even explain how to paint a highlight here. So, their techniques, it's kind of a joke. Uh, but... If you're looking for a reference book, this is actually okay, especially when using Games Workshop colors, because like this is a mixing reference chart to uh, lighten a green, you know, add uh, reds to lighten a red, or to darken a green, or lighten a green, or red add greens. It's this is a, this right here is a useful chart, which I'm not sure if you can get anywhere else, but uh, it's probably the only useful spot in the whole techniques book. I mean, how to retouch your model, you dab some primer onto the thing and paint over it. Some of it's just, it's just ridiculous. How to paint rust. This is a useful little technique here, but uh, you can find it in, on the internet, or in White Dwarfs 300 when the Ogre Kingdoms came out. Rivets, buttons, etc, etc. This right here, probably the worst photograph in the world. I won't go into detail as to why I think so, but that's a terrible picture. Test cards. You should always use test cards if you're mixing paint so you know what your formula is. Uh, and then you go into Golem Demon. Final touches, which is basing. Glue. Block. Done. I mean, there's more to it, but that's your basic stuff. Painting freehand. Draw an outline. Paint inside of it. It's simple stuff. They have stage by stage. For uh, They focus on this foundations, washes, and colors. Uh, it's it's high quality, in my opinion. It's very bright, which is uh, characteristic of some of the heavy metal stuff. But uh, it's nothing to write home about, because they don't actually show you how to do it. They just show you the completed stage. So, this is a terrible face painting tutorial about layering, batch painting, painting a hobbit, painting like a heavy metal person. But there's no brushes anywhere here. There's no explanation as to how to do any of it. Just apply this color, apply this color, apply this color. Uh, that's why videos are so much better. But, if you're going to get a book, this one is okay. Uh, much better than the first one, so if you see on the front of it, if you see an elf, it's a good one. If you see a gray knight, uh, or a space marine looking thing, for those of you who don't know what a gray knight is, then stay away from that book. Get the one with the elf if you're going to get a How to Paint Citadel Miniatures book. Uh, I think it runs about 25 bucks. It's okay. I'd probably pay about 15 for it, but obviously I bought it in the past because I used to be a GW nerd. Uh, next book is the Foundry Miniatures Painting and Modeling Guide, which is a much better book, uh, but it's a little limited in some aspects, but I'll go into that into detail later.
thanks for watching.